Hello ladies and gents, welcome to a new night point of view review. In front of us is the new Dacia Jogger. Facelift, new uh, logo. Now if we turn on the headlights, you can see very nice looking, cold LED headlights. Um, this is the extreme package. We're sitting on 16 inch alloys. And this is a seven seater. Now let's check the back space. It should be spacious. If we unlock the car, you can see the turn signals. Now, this is 160 liters and 1,807, I think, if you knock down the seats. Knock one of them down so you can see the little light inside. I know it's dark on camera here at this angle, so it is what it is. You can see it in my night review. Um, I'm just going to put the key in my pocket, jump inside. We're greeted with this Dacia greeting sound and seatbelt first now uh, this is powered by 1.0 TCE it's a three-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine producing 110 horsepower um, and linked to six-speed manual now let's turn the car on now let me just you see the blind spots there to check uh, let's play some radio here, maybe if we can demonstrate some music. Well, I can't play it for too long. But the speakers are okay. You can hear the bass if you turn it up louder, but you know, it's okay for basic speakers. I'm gonna stay on the uh, embedded navigation. You can pop a USB here. Media on the top, so you can use your Apple CarPlay as well. Um, and over here, you can see there's a light there, so I think we could start driving. Is this muted? It is now. So let's go. Uh, electronic parking brake disengages once you release the clutch and start driving. Now. Um, I'm gonna say while well, after testing the duster and the Lugan stepway I'm growing a fan of Dacia Now Jogger is quite similar to be honest and I've tested the 90 horsepower version same petrol engine and um, This one 110 horsepower now between the two cars, I can't say that I feel too much, uh, you know, power difference. Simply due to the fact that this car might be slightly heavier. It's a bigger car. Let me just check my camera here. I wanted to jump around. Got loose uh, a few times back. Now, auto starts up off, engages and disengages when you press in the clutch. Now, um, well, 110 horsepower, this is the best you can get if you don't go for the hybrid. Hybrid would give you 140-ish horsepower. So but let's say if you don't uh, want the hybrid and you're just looking at pure petrol, I think this is okay uh, on the highway. You know, you can speed up but it's nothing you know super exciting or anything I think 0 to 100 is more than 11 seconds so having that in mind um, you know this is not a fast car now um, six-speed manual a bit longer gears fairly precise uh, doesn't feel like German cars when you put it into gear but it's it's still good it's not bad and let's see what else well handling of the car is excellent in the bends even if you're a little bit faster there's not too much leaning although the car is uh, sitting taller and i like that because you have a better overview 
you can see the hood well I can see the hood I'm a taller person so you know I feel a little bit more safer inside and right comfort 16 inch alloys so nice and comfy there's more tire some people say balloon tires but you know it's comfortable so the suspension is okay uh, on the back it's a torsion beam so no multi-link but you know it's a Dutch I, I mean even in some higher uh, like entry premium models you get a torsion beam except if you go for like uh, you know more powered versions now um, the brakes I would say normal not too sensitive so let me speed up here I keep driving this as a diesel because I used to own a diesel car so I like to shift early but I keep forgetting you have to you know push it to high revolution into petrol and you know it's fast then <laughs> it's just my habit of you know driving cars uh, yeah so uh, this definitely feels more alive when you uh, punch the throttle but I can say after having some experience now driving Dutchess uh, what are the pros and cons of this car now uh, I haven't done the fuel consumption test I'm just gonna you know add the information at some point in the video um, because I'm gonna do it afterwards after this video so I pick up the car with 8 liters and I drove it a little bit outside the city uh, to another city and it was around 8 so it didn't drop now um, one thing or a con uh, if we can say that way generally in Dacia I think they need to improve the seats so this seats don't have a lumbar support on the front only the driver could go up and down so the passenger is fixed okay in this car it is a bit taller rooftop so you won't have a problem on the passenger seat like in the stepway for example but I think they need to work up uh, on the seat comfort because a lot of people are using these cars as a taxi or a cab and it's just simply you know not good enough for those who are sitting long or a lot in these cars I think that's not fair um, otherwise this is really not a bad car it's actually comfortable I personally had so much prejudices to be honest because of the like two generations back just I, I saw a few people had like bad impressions and that just lingered um, until I got a chance to drive this new models so of course these models are upgraded they're you know refined and Dodge has learned from their mistakes but still you know that was that now the steering is there's no setting so the default setting that you get is not too precise but it's not too light either so I have a feeling that my camera is not perfect so let me just check here so I think I got the camera or at least I hope I got the camera at the right spot um, yeah sometimes you just you know uh, it gets loose um, but hopefully it's okay now now uh, what else I may add before we get to the highway um, yeah you're sitting tall and you have a good overview for the side mirrors you got a good overview in the back it's not too narrow you can see a little bit back uh, further away but it's good for parking 
and on the front it's also good overview but the bottom a pillar part is slightly a blind spot so for the pedestrians now when we're talking about the jogger i'm just gonna go forward with the review here um because there's just not too much tech to talk about um it's nicely packed you have automatic uh ac it's nice and physical controls uh you have the uh power windows you know all the goodies that you want in the basic car now unfortunately there's no uh lane assist there's a radar for emergency braking which is nice uh, but it doesn't keep distance uh, on a cruise control unfortunately as well and also they've saved money on the power window so only the driver's side is fully automatic so once you press it all the way down goes all the way down or up and the others you need to keep holding the power button to like raise or low the um, you know windows now um what else okay uh, in this one in this trip computer there's actually a coach telling you to shift up and when to shift down now in the duster i've never saw it telling me to shift down so I'm not sure what was the deal with that say it was the same in the stepway So we're getting to the highway. I'm gonna speed up a little bit. So the car is definitely nice and punchy when you drive the petrol as intended. And just a little bit more aggressive in the beds here. The car is stable, but the back end will stick out a little bit. Going uphill, it's pulling nicely. Basic LED lights are quite good. I'm just let the car the speed up. So I'm just gonna slow down, create some distance. Now, let's see if we can get to 100. Pay attention to the cabin noise level. Now I can hear some tire noise and some wind noise coming from the side mirrors. But if I speed up to 130, let's say, speeding up in the sixth gear so it's taking time so this is 130 and honestly this is noisy there's so much noise coming from the a pillar not your ideal car for driving on highway now let me just put it to lower gear fifth gear and bunch it Let's speed up to, let's say 150, just briefly. It takes time, but you can do it. And then the noise is excessive, obviously, so. Now you can switch the screen here off to a minimum. turn on the cruise control press the button press set punch in the speed and then you can see how this looks 
Got a green marker there. The headlights are really nice. You press plus or reset button. You can increase your speed. I gotta say the performance of the LED headlights is really good, at least when it's not raining. Now you can see the signs here, they are a little bit bright in this dark interior, but it's nice and informative. you can press the brake to disengage the cruise or you can press the button this is our exit so the car is really nice to drive overall not too shabby brakes are good you can deaccelerate downshifting as well So comfort is also good. So regular audience knows this, but we're gonna do a little headlights test. Okay, let me just get past these cars. I think they're empty actually, but yeah, this is good no street lights you can see the performance actually in person it's very good and this is the long beam kind of raises up slightly and goes down I'm gonna take uh, iPhone camera because it has a better sensor just to show you a more realistic picture normal beam long beam you can see it's combined cold and warm light and this is just cold light Now, uh, I know some of you ask for uh, navigation. So there's address, you have to know the exact address or you can find it on the map. Um, let me see here. This is zoom out too far maybe, but um, I know the location. gives me a route I say okay so you can see the colors here and it tells you like like in which lane you have to be so yeah blind spot for the traffic light maybe as well a pillars now let me just show you here you can see my average is still eight liters so there's that but you know overall good car for daily commuting if you need more space and maybe not your ideal car for longer journeys if so navigation uh, yeah I wanted to say if so if, if you want to go for longer journeys maybe just you know keep it nice and steady slower speeds because the cabin really isn't that uh, good soundproof or doesn't have a good yeah insulation now Looks like this wants me to use a roundabout, although there's a tunnel. Meters, keep left. After 110 meters, keep left. Calculating route. And figure it out. 
cutting this in as you can see I've passed 50 kilometers and fuel consumption is around 5 liters already stabilized around 30 kilometers trip at 5 liters driving 70 80 kilometers through avenues so I've actually saved 15 kilometers of coasting so this car could be fuel efficient if you are gentle and thirsty if you're not so see we're now dropping to 4.9 my lowest was 4.8 liters and here is my score now time to summon up the impressions well I think I've said it all you know it's a good ride maybe slightly pricey for today's uh, car market uh, to be honest I really would not want to be in your shoes if you need to buy a new car today because yeah the prices are just a little bit higher than most people can cover in average uh, income but if this is something you're gonna pick up I think for a budget car it's not too shabby could be better but you know uh, there's always choices so you're the one who has to pick it now the car really coasts nicely I, I gotta say uh, one detail as well and the car you know you can hear the petrol engine a little bit it's not too loud yes it's a three-cylinder sounds like a coffee grinder but from the outside uh, the exhaust is like behind the driver it's not on the usual spot on the back end of the car you know the exhausts or the petrol is quite loud on the outside so that might turn on some of you petrol heads so as you can see I need to hold this one in order to go down you can see it doesn't go all the way down so it stops just wanted to demonstrate that for you I'm gonna see this one's automatic but let me just you can hear the petrol Yeah, it's a nice petrol sound. So window is fully automatic on the driver end. And uh, let me see, I'm gonna park here. So this one's not a handicap, the other one next to it, it is. So let me just engage the reverse camera there. Now, I don't need to park perfectly, although I like to, but um, I'm just gonna leave anyway after this so you can see the camera here I'm not really sure if it's good or bad uh, the brightness was kind of strong in the other Dutchess so I'm just gonna assume it's not good you might see it better now the parking camera is actually quite decent uh, for the purpose of parking you can see that so that's it uh, I hope you like this review um, I hope it was informative and don't forget your valuables inside the car so hope to see you in the next one if you did like this video be a cool person give it a like share it on Dacia forums if you found it informative and you know uh, check my day review my day driving with no talking and hope to see you in the next video so just a little walk around the car locks itself automatically but you can see it uh, in this lights so these are lights on i really like this gray color i bet it will look the best maybe in black but i know black color is hard to maintain clean so this is not a bad option as well so there you go 
And I gotta say, I really love the new Dacia signature on the front and the back and on the steering wheel. It's so good. So much better than the previous uh, model with a chrome badge. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.